I was recently in Sedona and had an opportunity once again to sit within the vortexes, the energy there. And I had a real deep connection this time around, which was especially high vibrational and messages kept coming through. And I want to share some of those with you in this video, but a lot of information is starting to come through. It's going to change the way you perceive consciousness. It's going to relabel a lot of things. A lot of the things that we thought we understood regarding our lineage and our timeline, um, that's about to change. So the Council of Twelve came through. I was laying in bed and um, all of a sudden I felt this tremendous amount of space. My mind was really, really quiet. I had spent the day out, uh, I think it was on, on Bell Rock this day in particular, and I was laying in bed and I was connected to Bell because I was staying very close to that location. And the energy just was filling me, was flowing through me, very high frequency. And I realized that I was being attuned and trained to the frequency of that particular vortex. Well, the the um, Council of Twelve came forward in this energy, interestingly enough, and started to tell me about consciousness, describing it in a new way. They want me to pass this information along to whoever is ready to receive it. Um, and it's quite extraordinary. This energy came through in such a fashion that the next day, my spirit guide shows showed me an image of um, him. Have you ever been to a carnival and saw at an amusement park? They have one around here, that ride where it spins and the, um, the force pushes you up against the wall and the floor drops. Well, he sent me an image that my guides, my Pleiadian guide was included in this as well, was kind of up against the wall as this high frequency energy came through. They were kind of pressed out because it was so expansive. Well, as this energy came through, I started receiving amazing, amazing information. We're going to dive into that now. So consciousness, um, we think is con of consciousness, really it's a label that we use to describe um, what many would consider a phenomenon, right? Well, really consciousness we know is everything. Everything is consciousness. It's boundless. It is everywhere. The matter, everything that that we perceive is consciousness. So we have varying levels of consciousness, different dimensional bandwidths. Now, these are all labels, and it's all energy. Consciousness manifests in this reality as energy. Now, when I was out, I think it was the first night I was there last week, um, went out at night, and uh, I was looking up at the Milky Way, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, and able to see energy, these orbs flying all over the place. And um, later that night when I was lying in bed and the Council of Twelve comes through, they told me that that was in fact their energy. Uh, now, we're going to get into what we consider ETs, the Galactic Federation, and things like that, and what that really is. So this is going to be a really interesting, expansive conversation. We're going to do a little bit now and more in the future. So let's take the topic of um, ETs and let's start with that. So we, as we as humans study ETs, the Galactic Federation, we're trying to use our brain to come up with varying levels and various different ETs and things like that. That is a perspective from our, our humanity, okay? This energy comes through and based on our history, our lineage, what's passed down through the generations and what's observed and written about, we project out this energy as ETs. Now, the Council of Twelve, when they communicated with me that night, told me that they actually represent the 12 strands of our DNA, okay? So we could look at that as um, an aspect of us, which truly is who they are. It's an aspect of us, and as the DNA strands activate, we rise in frequency and we're able to unlock higher versions, multidimensional versions of us. So I was communicating with this particular frequency of energy who we label 
as the Council of Twelve, which is representative of our 12 strands of DNA, which is exactly what they told me. So I'm passing that on to you. Take that for what it may, you know, if that resonates with you, awesome. That's what I received. Now, I want to mention, too, that um, people receive things. They receive this knowing, this information as it comes forward, and it runs through everybody's limiting beliefs and filters. So I'm bringing forward a perspective based on my frequency, based on me, where I'm at. And it may be slightly different from you. Maybe you've done more work with a sp specific star um, being, maybe Arcturian or Andromedan, whatever it may be for you. Maybe the information you received is slightly different. That is absolutely okay. If we're looking at our reality from a more hardened perspective of the human perspective, we're going to start to see ETs in various different levels in ver various different species and things like that, okay? Now, I am I was very expansive this night and this information came through and they said that they are perceived as extraterrestrials. They are in fact not extraterrestrials. That is the human perspective based on this specific reality. So what we're doing is we're opening up a very wide bandwidth to be able to understand that none of what we're really perceiving is real. It is a manifested perspective or experience based on encoded like lim limiting beliefs, experiences that we've had throughout the eons that have been kind of locked up and, and written into our, our DNA. So it's a very expansive concept, okay? So the Council of 12, not extraterrestrials, the Federation, not extraterrestrials. These are all higher frequency bandwidths of consciousness that as we bring that energy forward, it slows down because it encounters matter as it moves up our central channel and it gets up here and it reflects out uh, as something that the human brain can understand based on what we've learned and, and known and, and what's been you know stored within us, these beliefs. Okay, so I want to make that very clear, which opens up another doorway to the polarity here and the good versus evil and that kind of thing. It's all just there to perceive and understand different frequencies of energy, high frequency, low frequency. Okay. So for us to be able to experience that, we need to be able to feel that. And we feel that through our emotions and our emotions will trigger a thought or a memory that corresponds to it. So we could get into a frequency of fear. Let's say like me, I was afraid of ETs when I was young and my guide first came through when I was eight, nine, 10 years old, didn't know was my guide at the time and appeared as an, as an ET. And I had that fear. So I blocked off that energy. Okay. So that's what happens. So what we want to do is when we encounter these fears, our higher self is showing us the dense energy and we need to alchemize that. Okay. We want to kind of take these polarities and start to bring them together. So we sit and we bring love forward. We feel it. We breathe with it. We ground it. And we essentially speed up that energy flow as it moves through our central channel, okay? So um, as we do that, it's the airplane wing. It starts moving faster and faster and faster. And that creates a pressure differential. More high-frequency energy could come through and fill that space. So when I was being attuned the other night, um, I was having a tremendous amount of space being created within me which allowed for a big expansion in consciousness. And in order for you to have that happen, um, you need to be willing and able and ready with intent to face your limiting beliefs as they arise because your soul will move them up so that you can perceive them and be able to anchor in your higher self and really breathe and feel that. Okay, so we can release this stuff. So they were talking about the evolution of consciousness. So the grid was anchored in all of these sites throughout the planet. And this is a grand experiment, guys. This is an experiment in um, a grand rising of consciousness. Okay. And it was set up and it manifested the way it is here with the planet, with these vortex sites, um, with the, the grid around the planet and how that was anchored and what the purpose of it is. And I got information regarding the Native Americans 
all the indigenous cultures, whether it be the Mayans, the Native Americans, you know, even look at the Egyptians in Egypt, all around the world, what their role was in this entire process and the relics and things that they've left behind, not really what we think. OK, I'm talking the cave drawings, the E.T. drawings, the UFO drawings, the, the hieroglyphs, not what we think. Um, there is a different explanation for that. OK, so the planet is here and it is um, she's rising in consciousness and we are here to assist in that process. And the grid was anchored to be able to ground high frequency energy into the planet, okay? And all this was set up so that we as humans can go through this experiment of these activations and restoring a new earth, okay? That's the best way, that's the best way to put it. So a um, long time ago, these vortex sites were set up and they were connected up through an energetic grid. And the indigenous... Um, cultures at the time were the grounded versions of the higher frequency beings, okay, that were here to essentially working both ends of it, working from the etheric higher frequency perspective. They were born and incarnated to work from a lower frequency perspective. And this energy was brought down into these vortex sites, okay. And then it was connected through the earth like a grid, okay. So there's an etheric grid. There's a grid through, you know, throughout the planet as well. Now, like, you know, with Tesla, with his wireless transmission of power, you know, he would anchor into the earth and then be able to transmit this energy wirelessly. That is a result of this energetic grid. It's tapping into that. Okay. So when this energy comes in, and I was shown this visually, actually, the other night, um, energy is grounded into these vortex sites. Say, let's use Bell. Bell Rock is an example. So the energy comes in and I was shown lightning coming in to, to Bell. Okay. And this energy is grounded. Now the native Americans and the indigenous people all around the planet were anchoring this energy into these vortex sites. Okay. So the high frequency light would come in and those that were incarnated, which were 5d cultures at the time, um, were grounding this into the rock, into the environment, okay? And this was connected up throughout the planet. Now, the planet um, has been rising and falling in frequency and the, the energetic site, these energetic vortex sites remained to hold it from continuing to fall. So we had cultures that lived in these areas that were charged with grounding and maintaining these anchor points. So all of this energy comes into the earth and it's like a big battery. Okay. So what happens? Well, this energy comes in and it flows and it creates space within the planet. It creates movement. We get earthquakes, tectonic shifts, volcanoes, and things like that. Right. Um, but when a battery gets overcharged, the energy has to be released. And there are points around the planet where the energy is released. I know we see physical energy being released through earthquakes and volcanoes. We also have etheric energy being released um, in an etheric way, like we feel it when we work with our emotions and things like that. We may not necessarily have physical pain, but we have energy being transmuted. So places like Skinwalker Ranch, okay, is one place where that energy is being released and dispelled okay so it comes into the planet and the planet is trying to stay in balance and the excess energy high frequency energy is coming out there so bermuda triangle places of portals and things like that it's opening up these portals so it's being it's being brought up into the environment in these these different areas so that was some information that i had received as well the native americans let's use them as an example these cave drawings we've all seen them right uh, whether you've seen them in person or seen them on TV, these UFOs and stick figures that look like ETs and things like that. Uh, that, it was very interesting to me because what came through with that regarding that was um, we think of those as records of contact. These cultures were documenting the contact that they had with these beings. 
which might have might have been the case. Now that would have been an ordinary type of thing back then because there was they were at a higher frequency. So these beings would have been at a hot, you know, of that reality. Okay. They would have been of that reality. They would have manifested. Okay. Because these indigenous cultures held a higher frequency. So it allowed for higher frequency energy to manifest and they manifest in a certain way. Did they manifest as ETs though? Not so sure about that, but how do we get these cave drawings? Okay. I think these indigenous beings were just at a higher frequency and had, um, was able to perceive a lot of this stuff, not necessarily physical contact could have been, but mostly etheric, um, psychic, uh, telepathic kind of contact and things like that. These drawings, carvings, things like that, that you see in these caves were instructions. They were instructions for the humans, us, who were to visit these sites. So when you see these types of artifacts and things like that, that were recorded, um, uh, all over the world, when we start getting into these Native American cultures, and it's not just the Sedona vortexes and, you know, the Mayan Mayans um, down in Mexico and, and the pyramids and, and that type of thing. There's other areas around the planet where these cultures existed, where these frequencies were high. I mean, you have Stonehenge as well, so many other places. But these instructions were documented, okay? And what they purpose of them was to explain to the humans what they were going to experience while they were in this energy being activated. Okay. So you go to these high frequency sites and you sit and you meditate and you breathe and you create space. You're going to start to experience things and the experience comes forward based on um, how it's been encoded within our DNA to release and come forward. And that has to do with our culture and how we've how we've um, processed things and what we've been taught and what we've been told. So when we're seeing these spacecraft and and these these humanoid alien type of carvings, this is how this energy is going to manifest when we're activated at these sacred sites. Okay, so it was showing us or it is showing us what's going to happen as our DNA comes online. Okay. So these, all these sites are entrained. They're, they're tuned in, attuned to tune you in a way that certain aspects of your DNA and remembrance is going to activate. And that's going to come forward in a fashion that is recorded in these instructions. So we're going to start to see these types of you have these types of experiences with craft and things like that. So really that was showing us what we're going to experience based on the frequencies and what those frequencies are going to do in terms of activating certain aspects of our DNA and our physical body. Okay. It's going to start to manifest that way. When we are in an area of like Sedona and we see a lot of craft manifesting physical type craft in the sky. Now, when I was there, I, you know, the frequency I was at, I was seeing etherically orbs and that kind of stuff. Um, that, you know, especially that first night when the council came through. Uh, but many who come who are not necessarily awakened are going to experience craft, things that are more physical, things like that. And that's what those types of drawings and things like that are telling us is going to happen. It's a collective type of event. So you have so many people coming into these sites. Um, many are awakened, many are not. The ones that are awakened are holding space along with the vortexes and the sacred sites there. But those that are not awakened are going to have these activations. And these activations are going to manifest based on their frequency and level of reality and limiting beliefs, which is going to be like more physical type of manifestations. Okay. And we, as the light workers, if we're there, we do have the ability to perceive those if we choose to, because we can perceive anything below the frequency that we're at. Um, if we're really centered in a line, we're going to perceive the energy itself, the auras and that type of thing. So that's very, very important to understand that when these call them ETs come forward or come through, we're perceiving them in a certain way based on 
um, the filter that we're running at that time. What frequency are we at? The higher, the lower on the frequency, the more physical, the higher on the frequency bandwidth, the more etheric. So that's why they came through and they said, well, we're, you know, we're really not ETs. Okay. We're just what you would call consciousness, but we're going to start to redefine consciousness. And we're going to talk about that uh, more in later videos. So there's just so much happening right now. We are literally redefining our entire reality. When we look out, most of what we're seeing based on the collective consciousness um, and their frequency level is it's really a past version of humanity. So we need to be aware of that and keep that in mind and bring forward these loving and compassionate frequencies and hold space for others so that they can activate. And that's what's so, so powerful about these sacred spaces, Mount Shasta, all these around the world um, that have the ability to awaken others. So we can look again at, you know, the hieroglyphs and the things like that in the pyramids. We're seeing what is happening regarding these DNA activations. What, when it's activated, is going to start to come forward to experience, okay? Because when we have these experiences, it opens us up even further and allows us to feel and allows us to heal. And then that cycle continues. So we go back to these spots and we're called. And I was called to Sedona. Um, originally, I had a retreat scheduled and um, ended up changing it, moved it to next year because I felt like I needed to just go out there myself. Um, so I was being called to do that. And that's exactly what I did and, and just had incredible, amazing experiences. Now, not everybody's going to feel it in the same way or experience it in the same way, but when you're in these energies, what you can do is just meditate and feel it. Just feel everything and get present. I found I was extremely present. My mind was incredibly quiet. There was so much space available. Again, I go back to like my guide, like he's like this, showing me up against the wall. Um, so much space available for all of this to come through. And I know over the next few days, because I just got back, um, I'm going to experience more clearing myself and I'm going to need to work through that and uh, allow all of this new to find its home within my body. So when we're experiencing these high frequency, even the solar blasts and things like that, it's very important to anchor into the body and breathe and feel wherever it's calling you. I was up um, in one of the vortexes and just going through scanning my body and breathing into areas, my lower back, my upper back, my shoulders, um, wherever I needed to heal because my body was showing me I had density there. See, when the, we're in the presence of the high frequency light, the polarity comes online stronger. And if you're present and aware, you could feel in your body and you could scan it. You could use your breath exactly where the density is. And that's what I was doing. And I was freeing it up. I was alchemizing it. I was releasing it. And as I did that, I realized the pains went away when we're in these types of frequencies, we're literally in a new version of ourself. So what happens is um, we're carrying the weight of our old version, our lower frequency version into this high frequency energy. And if we could bring that consciousness, that awareness and consciousness, get it flowing through our body, we can literally upgrade our physical vessel, okay, to hold more light, to hold more frequency and integrate that. So it's very important to do that when we're in these energies. You are literally coming in with one body and leaving with another. Doesn't mean you're not going to have pain in the future, but when you do, you're going to have encoded with you, you're going to be entrained to these frequencies and you're going to be able to bring that energy consciously back into those areas and breathe into it. When we do breath work, that's what we do, breathe in into these areas and expand them. And really anchor that new version of you. So that's what that offers us to do. And that's a lot of what I did when I was there over the past few days. So a lot of amazing things, guys. There's going to be so much more. I wanted to throw this out there too. Um, I do private coaching. So if anybody wants to get into this energy, uh, I was completely attuned um, to Bell <laughs> when I was there. So I have that energy completely active within me. Um, if you're interested 
Go to the website, soulintegrationcoach.com. Sign up for a coaching session. If you become a premium member, coaching sessions are 50% off. So um, if you're looking to get into some of this energy, can't physically go there, want to get attuned to it, I'd love to jump on a private Zoom session with you. So definitely keep that in mind. If you know anybody that this video could help, I'd greatly appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And um, I'm still bringing forward a lot, guys. So much new stuff. We're going to really dive in and explore consciousness. And um, our reality is going to completely change. We're going to have a fantastic new perspective of it. I'm so excited. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I will see you next time.